this is a thing that I built a long time ago. It's been sitting in the backyard for years. <clears throat> it's a framework for the oldest motor ever invented. Um, Euro steam engine. You can build one of these. I'll show you how. This. It's a water pot, basically. On the arms, there's, um, there's holes. And when you heat this thing up, it spins like hell. And uh, it's uh, it's pretty cool. I'm gonna show you how it works because uh, I'm gonna have to do some modifications and stuff, and you might end up seeing some boring stuff. But uh, I don't know. This is the hub, and these are really easy to make. Use four inch EMT conduit. These are usually like eight inches long. These arms can be any length, but um, there is a limit. It's three quarter inch bolt, cap welded on each end, and then right there is where you add the water. This thing only runs as long as the water holds up. It holds up quite a while actually. And uh, the burner heats this bottom area. Like, actually what I'll have to do is I'll have to reposition that, that burner. But down in here is where the water is, and it boils, and it comes out these nozzles, and there's a little hole on the opposite ends, and the steam comes out of there, and then this thing, it, it spins like this, and uh, it uh, was built, it was first uh, invented by this guy in Greece about at least like 2,000 years ago, and it's called Hero Steam Engine. And as long as you've got water and heat, you can make a simple motor that you can use to, uh, you know, drive a canoe, maybe, or uh, maybe generate a little electricity for the 15 minutes that the water holds up. And uh, it's actually pretty cool. Anyway, I'll show you some more here. I'm going to fill this up with water. Okay, like I told you guys, um, you fill this thing up with water. And uh, I'm going to do that now to show you that I am um, put this little bung on there and uh, this bolt stops it up when you get the water in there. You just pour the water in and uh, hold on. Okay, you always want to make sure the water runs out the ends where the steam comes out. If not, this thing will blow up. And uh, I've come pretty close to blowing some up. They'll get clogged. This one's particularly dangerous because it's it's really old and full of rust. And a uh, big chunk of rust could uh, fly out in both ends. And uh, it would probably blow up before I got a chance to shut it down. So anyway, I'll show you what I mean by water coming out the ends though. As soon as the thing fills up. It holds quite a bit of water. It takes a little while to get it heated up too. Watch this, this is um, pretty incredible. The stuff that's in this. And, um, and, uh, I'm gonna turn it over and show you the stuff's coming out, but hold on. Okay, that's the stuff that's coming out of it. And you gotta be real careful with steam because uh, this stuff builds up and then, and then it clogs up um, the stuff and then it blows up. And, and uh, so you got to make sure that all that stuff, you know, I'm trying to flush as many times as I can. I'm a long ways from the safest person in the world, but I've run these things a lot of hours to try to build some kind of a torqueless flying machine motor out of them. And I uh, thought about different ways of refilling and better heat exchangers on the outside and all that kind of stuff. But mostly this is a very inefficient engine and uh, it'll do some stuff. But um, it has to, you have to put a lot of heat into it, and uh, that costs a lot of money, unless you use some kind of Fresnel lens or something like that to heat this case. But, um, but when, I, when I get this thing going, you're going to see that I'm putting a lot of fuel to it. You know, I'm having no mercy on this thing, unless it looks like it's going to blow up and I'll have to cut it off. But uh, anyway, I don't see how it goes. See the way that one's running out now? Some food running out of it. 
there and see that it's very pretty dark there's a lot of uh, huh, black rust I don't know what you call it but there's a lot of it coming out of there and uh, that's the stuff that will clog these ends so you always got to make sure you've got a good stream to make sure both of them are the same you know, you know, make sure they both maybe that one there got a pretty good pretty good stream and then uh, you just got to let them run and uh, flush this now I'm going to flush it some more and get it ready to put back on the unit so I can fire it up. Okay, now what you're looking for for safety. See how that one's going pretty good because this just filled up. And uh, and this one is lower than this one. So obviously this one's clogged still. You won't have this problem when you build it new because you won't have all the corrosion and stuff from sitting for years. But, uh, see now it's coming out at a pretty good pace, but um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to use this one or not. Well, anyway, let's hope we can, because otherwise, I don't know, the experiment will be going here pretty quick. But I have to show you, the, this is a safety thing here, because uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this thing full of water, make sure both of these uh, ends are more than good. cap this thing off and uh, you know what a, a pop-off valve wouldn't be a bad idea I don't know how to make one but uh, you know somebody smarter than me can I can uh, supply parts for anything that uh, that you see in any of these videos no problem and uh, give you really good uh, bulk price too okay anyway I'm gonna get on with it put this up in here up in the frame here and uh, it just bolts up through and it spins this way so it actually tightens the bolt sometimes you have to loosen it up and you'll actually tighten up enough to stop you really need to put a pin through there but I never did and I'm not going to now ok I'm just trying to chew on my leg ok I got the big camera on the other side you guys don't see that because that's all that's just VHS technical film and then this one here, I'll try to try to catch as much as I can of that. Alright. Okay, this here is uh I'm gonna do a start up on this. If you see anything bulging, you know it's uh, takes a little while for it to heat up. And then I'm really going to put the uh, fuel to it. Um, wait a minute or two.
move up here, get this thing running, so I'm going to add a little heat to it. Okay, basically these run a lot faster, but the bearings have been sitting in mud for years, and uh, and it's uh, pretty uh, pretty sensitive to friction. But uh, basically that's what it amounts to. You can get these things really spinning, and uh, this one here I'm still a little worried that it might clog up and blow up. It didn't sound exactly right. I was a little afraid of that. But anyway, that's uh, the uh, Hero Steam Engine demonstration and uh, I'm not going to run any harder because uh, I I need to build a new one if I'm going to do that so uh, anyway that's a uh, hero steam engine 
and uh, you can build these for probably about uh, oh I don't know probably ten dollars I was thinking about making a camp engine so if you had like a campfire or something you could run a small generator or something on these uh, generally they probably should be built out of steel because aluminum would probably get too hot as long as you've got water inside it can't get that hot but uh, but once it runs dry um, then you would melt your aluminum uh, steam engine and uh, well that's it hope you enjoyed that it wasn't great but that's the simplest motor you can build anywhere in the world as long as you've got water and a source of heat